up everyone, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and let's take a look at how you can create a Power BI embedded capacity in Azure. Let's go. If you're not familiar with what Power BI Embedded is, I've got another video that talks all about that. You can check that out over here. But I wanted to focus on how you actually create that Power BI Embedded capacity inside of Azure. Whether you're an ISV or a developer, this is an important step to begin embedding Power BI content for your customers. With that, let's head over to the computer and check out what we need to do. Okay, our first step on the journey is to head over to the Azure portal. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're signed in with a user that has a subscription where the Azure Active Directory tenant for that subscription, a user has signed up for Power BI. So this is a Power BI tenant or a tenant that has Power BI assigned to it, that's very important that you do that. The user that you sign into the Azure portal with cannot be a live ID user or a Microsoft account user. It has to be an organizational user, so a user that resides in that tenant. And you can head over to the documentation to get more details on that. All right, let's take a look at the Azure portal. Okay, so once you're signed in, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's create a new resource. And we can just search for Power BI. This will be under the data and analytics section. And we're gonna see a couple of things here. First off, we're gonna see Power BI Workspace Collections. This is what the old Power BI embedded was. It was renamed to Power BI Workspace Collections. We're not gonna use that, that is deprecated. Down towards the bottom here, you'll actually see Power BI Embedded. That's what we want. So let's select that. It's gonna give you some information with some links. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and create this resource. We need to give it a name. Then we need to select the subscription that we want. For the resource group, we can create a new one or use an existing one. I'm gonna use an existing one. You also get the opportunity to select your default Power BI capacity admin. You can select it from a list. This is gonna be a user in your tenant, so you can go ahead and create that. Then we wanna choose the location where this is gonna be created. This is the data center that it's gonna reside in. And then we choose our pricing tier. These are the SKUs that are available for Power BI Embedded. It's A1 through A6. Again, there's more details in the documentation if you wanna read about what those are. I'm just gonna go with A1. And then we can hit Create. This is actually creating the Power BI embedded capacity that we need to embed Power BI into our application for our customers. All right, after it's created, we could head over to all resources and we will see our Power BI embedded resource here or our Power BI embedded capacity. We can go ahead and select it. Now, one thing I like to do is I'm just gonna pin that to my dashboard so I can easily get back to it. Then what we'll see is we'll actually see the details of our resource itself. This gives us all the information that we selected when we created it. One thing we can do here is we can pause and start the resource. This is an awesome feature. So if I go ahead and pause it, say, yep. Once this is paused, I don't get billed. So if I don't need to use it, I can stop it. I can pause it. Billing is done hourly, but this actually gets calculated down from a minute basis during that hour. So this is huge. And then when I need to use it again, I can just go ahead and select start like this. And then we're back up and running with this capacity. This is great for like development and testing capacities where you may not need those all the time. This is great for maybe dev and test scenarios where you only need it during certain times. This may also be great for production scenarios where maybe you're only using this during certain times of the year, like quarterly. So it's a great feature to have. Okay, let's check out scaling. For the resource, we can check out scaling, which is done by the pricing tier. So if I go to pricing tiers here under scale, I can see all of the SKUs that are available for me with Power BI embedded. Right now I'm selected as an A1. I can then choose a different SKU. Maybe it's, again, an end of quarter scenario where I need to really bump up resources on this. Maybe I need to go to an A4 SKU to handle the load that will be done at the end of this quarter. Then I can just hit select and we're up and running. That may take a minute or two for it to complete, but once that's done, now say it's the end of my quarter operations, and I need to scale that back down to accommodate the load that's now occurring for my resource. I can go back to scaling and pricing tier. You'll see that it's now an A4. I can bump that back down to an A1 and hit select. Again, this may take another minute or two to do. The other thing I can do from the Azure portal is handle my Power BI capacity admins. So I can select Power BI capacity admins, administrators under settings, 
And here you can see only I am listed here, but I can go ahead and add another administrator here if I need to. Again, they have to be a member of the tenant that we're working with. This can also be handled in the actual Power BI admin portal as well. Another thing to note is that all of these items I've talked about, you can handle that programmatically through the Azure Resource Manager APIs as well. Did all of that make sense? If you've got questions about how you can do this or other steps that may be involved, be sure to leave that down below in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the Power BI YouTube channel. You can also check out other videos over at my YouTube channel, Guy in a Cube. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.